So there's lots of little fires everywhere. Wow. And, uh, and they've got no way of shutting the circuit down. Hi and welcome to another one of our Boat How To Ask the Expert videos on boat electrics. I'm Jan Attenstedt. And I'm Nigel Calder. And today we'll talk about one of our favorite topics at Boat How To, overcurrent protection. There is one aspect that is often overlooked when people choose the right type of fuse or circuit breaker. And uh, this is the Ampere Interrupt Capacity or AIC for short. So Nigel, what's the AIC rating and why is it so important? Well, let's start with a battery. Uh, if you drop a wrench across the, the battery posts, you'll melt the wrench. Mm. So how come you can melt the wrench? Well, because there's hundreds, if not thousands of amps mm -hmm. uh, in a short circuit on a battery. Even a modest uh, AGM battery, like a Group 27 about this size, can probably generate a thousand amps of short circuit current. Mm -hmm. um, when we get to bigger batteries, they uh, can be 3,000 amps, 5,000 amps. Mm -hmm. And when we get to lithium ion, we actually don't know. Uh, it could theoretically be 10 or 20,000 amps. That's so, a lot uh, of current. <laughs> that's a lot of current, right. <laughs> so when that happens, the fuse melts, um, and, and that should break the circuit. But in, if the current is high enough, the, uh, the fuse can arc over and it still becomes conductive so the fuse is not working anymore. Mm -hmm. In fact, you ionize the air path uh, and so you've still got a circuit. Mm -hmm. And now you've got, you know, 1,000 amps, 2,000 amps mm -hmm. through the circuit and you've got a, the, the boat's going to melt down. Mm -hmm. Somewhere there's going to be a fire on the boat. Mm -hmm. So the fuse has to have the capability to handle uh, X thousand amps mm -hmm. uh, if it's confronted in a dead short situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the ampere interrupting capacity. Uh, when we get to the first fuse on the battery from the battery, the main fuse, with lead acid batteries, we need an AIC rating of at least 5,000 amps mm -hmm. to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. um, 10,000 would be better. And when we get to, um, to lithium ion batteries, we really want a fuse with an AIC rating of 20,000 amps. Mm -hmm. So that would pretty much only be class T fuses. Cla well, in terms of what's affordable in mm -hmm. the boat world, yeah, okay. it would be a class T fuse. And then for the, um, for the other batteries, an ANL fuse typically has an AIC rating of 6,000 to 10,000 amps. Mm -hmm. And then we see a lot of these uh, now, these square fuses that go right on the battery. Oh, yeah, the, the uh, MRBF. Yeah, MRBF. Oh, that's a marine rated battery fuse. Mm -hmm. um, that's what that stands for. Um, and they, I think, are probably five or six thousand mm -hmm. uh, AIC rating off the top of my head. I mm -hmm. can't remember. So, so in a, for a lithium ion battery, for example, an MRBF fuse is not appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there you definitely AIC need a rating. class T fuse then. Yeah. Right. So I was on a boat some years ago. This guy had a 70-foot boat in San Diego in a fancy marina mm -hmm. and he put a 32 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack in it and he Whoa. put a jet drive mm -hmm. in the boat with a and he took an electric motor from a drag racing car <laughs> <laughs> which was rated at 1500 horsepower Whoa! attached it to the jet drive and I flew over there he wanted me to see the demonstration the first time they ever tried this thing and uh, I looked at this and I, I said you know what happens how are you going to control this? And they said, well, we've calculated that the load from the jet drive will keep the electric motor down to such and such, and then that'll be so many amps and then so it'll all work. So I said, I don't think it works like that. I think if you try to slow that electric motor down, it's going to look like a short circuit to the system. And what happens then? And they said, well, we have a relay in the circuit. It'll trip out. So it was a 400 amp relay. So uh, I said, okay, so we said uh, we're on the transom of the boat looking down into the engine room and uh, he's got a remote uh, control for the relay. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, I'll, I'll flick it on and off just to see what happens. So he flicked it on and off and in, the, in that fraction of a second that it was flicked on and off, that relay melted, arced over, oh. and nice. So now we have a... We have a 20-foot rooster tail coming out the back of the boat and we're looking at the dock wondering, you know, what are we going to hit when the cleats <laughs> give way? And there's molten copper splattering around the engine compartment. So there's lots of little fires everywhere. Wow. And, uh, and they've got no way of shutting the circuit down. And so they had a fire axe there and, uh, and there wasn't much headroom. So the guy's kind of doing this, trying to chop the cables with a fire axe. So it took them a minute or two to cut through the cables. Whoa. And, uh, and then we put all the fires out. And actually it didn't did mm -hmm. very little damage. But uh, that, that uh, relay that they had had an insufficient AIC rating for, uh, for the system. And the, when they put that short circuit basically on that, that lithium-ion battery pack, they probably had, I don't know, 10,000 amps right uh, through there. Wow. 
Okay, I mean, yeah. that's a kind of extreme <laughs> situation. No, so, so <laughs> after, after we were all done, I went... I want you to give, to give you the fellow's name. I said, that was the best product demonstration I've ever seen. Can we do that again? <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't very impressed. Yeah. Uh, wow, but that's, uh, yeah. that's one story. Well, I mean, yeah. but I think even if you're on a normal boat, like make sure that if you have uh, AGM batteries, for example, that you have at least an MRBF fuse on there. Yeah, that's a minimum. And, um, and yeah. with lithium ion, I guess uh, there's no way around a class T fuse. Yeah, um, uh, definitely a class T yeah. fuse. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Nigel. Well, and um, apart from the AIC rating, there are a number of other considerations when it comes to choosing an appropriate overcurrent protection device. So check out our Boat Electrics 101 course at boathowto.com to learn all you need to know about this topic.